Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Adams Field in Quincy for the Massachusetts Independent Baseball League Final Four Tournament. And the Ashland Sevens today are taking on Medfield Ashland 18 and two overall on the season. It has been just an incredible year for this Ashland Sevens group. Medfield is 19 and three, and we are just about ready to go here from Adams Field in Quincy. Tom Nappy on the call, Connor Donovan on camera. Ashland is the home team as they are the one seed here in the final four. Let's take a look at the Ashland Sevens Diamond. Getting the nod tonight is Owen Radcliffe. He'll be making the start. Jackson Hornung is behind the plate. Dom Cavanaugh at first base. Tyler Dossis at second base. Dante Diavanzo, the shortstop. Mason Dushney, the third baseman. From left to right, it's Kevin Balowitz, Sam Farrell, and Nick Calabrese. As for Medfield, we'll take you through their lineup. Leading things off will be the third baseman, Nick Sheehan. Max Goodman, the second baseman, batting second. Dennis Fullen, the DH, hitting third. Ben Leonard, the left fielder, hitting cleanup. Sam Palmer, the center fielder, hitting fifth. Jack McDonald, the first baseman, hitting sixth. Jack Goodman, the shortstop, hitting seventh. Ryan Murray, the right fielder, hitting eighth. And Mike Giglio, the catcher, hitting ninth. And the pitcher for Medfield is Ryan Donahue. It is a nice evening for some Massachusetts independent League baseball, and you can't ask for any better weather than this for a playoff game. A little bit humid, but it is certainly less humid than it was earlier this afternoon. The temperatures are reading about in the high 70s here in Quincy as we are just about ready for baseball here tonight. The Ashland Sevens yesterday won their first game of the Final Four tournament as they took down Quincy by a final of four to one. An impressive win by the Ashland Sevens last night. Dom Cavanaugh was on the mound and he was just sensational as he was able to pitch his way through a very tough Quincy lineup. He went all seven innings, giving up just six hits, one run while striking out seven. It was tied at one heading to the bottom of the fifth when Dom Cavanaugh stepped up to the plate and helped his own cause. A two RBI single that was able to score Farrell and Hornung, made it a three to one game, and then Dossis drove in Cavanaugh to make it a four to one game, and that would be your final. So the winner of tonight's game will have the 8 p.m. game tomorrow and a chance to clinch the Massachusetts Independent Baseball League title and it will be one of these teams that will be in that eight o'clock game tomorrow. The loser of this game will play at five o'clock and they will be playing against Quincy, who tonight was able to take down Braintree in extra innings, 11 to seven. That game went nine innings. So Quincy staying alive in the tournament. And this is their home field, Adams Field here on Veterans Drive in Quincy, a beautiful facility here in the wonderful Quincy, Massachusetts. As Owen Radcliffe warming up and he is just about set to go. He has been sensational on the mound all season long for the sevens. And they did take his stats down due to possible scouting, but we can tell you that his ERA is well below a 2.00, and he has been tremendous all season long. He is 4-0 and oh on the mound for the Sevens. Ashland has met up with Medfield earlier this season, and that was their final regular season game in Medfield. Ashland defeated Medfield in that game at 7-5, and we were at that game, so you should be seeing the broadcast soon on either HCAM in Hopkinton, WACA TV in Ashland, or HCAT in Holliston. Your crosstown networks, the home of Ashland Sevens baseball this summer. Of course, they are typically Ashland Legion, but with the Legion season being canceled, we're playing some independent ball 
So here tonight, it's the Medfield River Rats and the Ashland Sevens. And we are ready to go as Nick Sheehan steps in for Medfield, the third baseman. A good crowd on hand here tonight as Owen Radcliffe set to deliver the first pitch of the game. The lineup and the pitch. Little inside there, one and oh. Medfield, of course, in their away white jerseys with the black numbering and lettering. The Ashland Sevens in their blue jerseys with the red on the sleeves, the red stripe down the middle with the white Ashland across the front. And the nice numbers and the names on the back as that was fouled away, one and one. Sheehan had a good day against Ashland during the season. He went three for three in that game. And he is certainly a threat in that leadoff spot. Swing and a miss, one and two. It was Tyler Dossis who started against Ashland during the season. He went six innings, only giving up two earned runs as this is fouled off. Look out on the street. Count remains one and two. And there is strike three, one away. That'll bring up Max Goodman, the second baseman. The lefty steps in with one out for Medfield. Wind up and the pitch. A little high, one and oh. Radcliffe set to deal, the leg lift and the pitch. This is fouled away, one and one. Now these midfield hitters aren't afraid to swing the bat. And they have produced some good offensive performance this season, but they'll certainly have their work cut out for them against Radcliffe. Little outside, two and one. Goodman went one for three and the game against Ashland during the season. Wind up and the pitch. He also scored a run in that game. There's a strike, two and two. Dante Diavanzo had a lot of AAU commitments, but he is at shortstop for the sevens and should be here the remainder of the tournament. This is his third game in action as that pitch is outside. Full count now on Goodman. Radcliffe likes to try to work the corners. Wind up and the pitch. A little high, says the home plate umpire. A one out walk. That'll bring up Dennis Full in the DH. Dennis Full in went 0 for 2. In the only game these two teams met up. Ratcliffe looks at first and is set to deal. Up high. Well, sometimes it takes Ratcliffe a little time to settle down. You'll notice in the early innings he could be a little wild, then as the game goes on he just gets more and more right on the money. As this is hit in the air, right side, and it is caught for the out by Calabrese and a good throw in to keep Goodman at first. Two away, that'll bring up Ben Leonard, the cleanup man and left fielder. Ben Leonard, a good athlete for Medfield. Also has participated in a number of AAU programs and from what I understand will be playing at a good school next year as this pitch is up high. One and oh is the count. Ratcliffe from the stretch with a runner on first. And this is up the middle, glove by the shortstop. He'll flip the second for the force out and that'll do it. For the top of the first to the bottom of the inning we go. The Ashland Sevens coming up to bat on HCAM and Hopkinton, WACA TV in Ashland and HCAT in Holliston. 
Well, we are just about ready for the bottom of the first. The lights are back on here at Adams Field in Quincy. So let's take you through the Ashland Sevens lineup, who this evening will be facing Ryan Donahue for Medfield. The Ashland Sevens lineup consists of Dante Diavanzo leading things off. He's the shortstop. Sam Farrell, the center fielder, batting second. Jackson Hornung, the catcher, hitting third. Dom Cavanaugh, the first baseman, hitting cleanup. Tyler Dossis, the second baseman, batting fifth. Kevin Balowitz, left fielder, hitting sixth. Lawrence Tang, the designated hitter, hitting seventh. Mason Dushney, the third baseman, hitting eighth. And Nick Calabrese, the right fielder, hitting ninth. As for the Medfield Diamond, it is Ryan Donahue getting the start this evening. Mike Giglio behind the plate. Jack McDonald at first base. Max Goodman at second base. Jack Goodman the shortstop. Nick Sheehan the third baseman from left to right. Ben Leonard, Sam Palmer, and Ryan Murray. As Dante Diavanzo set to step in in just a bit. Of course, they're going to give Ryan Donahue some extra warm-up reps as... We had a good 15, 20 minute delay waiting for the lights to come back on, but it is certainly good to see Dante Diavanzo back out there in an Ashland Sevens uniform. He has been rostered all season, but of course he participates in AAU ball as well. So that has taken up uh, the majority of his time, but he is back out there tonight and ready to go on the season. He is one for four overall and certainly provides some solid defense in the middle infield. And Coach Obid mentioned that he is certainly glad to have him in the lineup for some of these postseason games. As Dante Diavanzo stepping up to the plate now, the winner of this game, playing for a spot in tomorrow night's 8 p.m. game. Here in the Massachusetts Independent Baseball League Final Four. Tom Nappy on the call, Connor Donovan on camera. And we are ready for the bottom of the first. Donahue set to deliver. Line up and the pitch. Little low. One and oh. Well, I guess the good thing about the light situation is it didn't happen too far into the game. So no one was really overly uh, stretched out yet, so it's still kind of in their pre-game routine as this is hit in the air, foul territory, right side out of play, one and one. Let's take a look at the dimensions here at Adams Field in Quincy. 346 to left, 363 to left center, and then over to right it is 340. I think it's pretty much 363 all around that center field fence. Donahue set to deliver. Line up and the pitch. There's a stride. One and two. Good crowd on hand here from both sides. An all TVL 8 o'clock game tonight. As Diavanzo gets a piece of this over to right center, that'll get in for a hit. A leadoff single for the shortstop, and that'll bring up Sam Farrell. Nice way to start the evening off at the plate. Sam Farrell has had a good season for the Sevens. Donahue set to deliver. That low. And how about these numbers? A 341 batting average, 567 on base percentage, a 545 slugging percentage by the speedy Sam Farrell. He has scored 25 runs on the season, checking that first runner back safe. And he has driven in eight. Donahue set to deliver. Swing and a miss. Oh, and one. It was actually Donahue who got the start against Ashland during the season. And he had a 
pretty good performance. Went six and a third, giving up seven hits, seven runs, four of which were earned, and struck out eight in the Ashland seven to five victory. Line up and the pitch, down low. Two and one. Sam Farrell has shown some good discipline at the plate this season. Leg lift and the pitch up high. Runner on first, no outs for the sevens. Check it at first, runner back safe. And Donahue likes to keep the runners at bay. And he will throw over a number of times. And I'm sure as many teams know by now, the sevens team likes to steal as Farrell draws the walk. Two on, no outs. Ivanzo up to second, Farrell to first, Jackson Hornung to the plate. Dangerous hitter stepping in. Four thirteen on the season, five thirty one on base percentage, and a eight seventy slugging percentage. There's a strike. Oh and one. Hornung scored one of the runs last night in the win over Quincy. A little high there. One and one. Donahue set to deliver. And Hornung makes contact up the middle, glove by the shorts, up flip to second for one, and that is all they'll get. I'd say that was a good move there by the second baseman. He held onto it because he knew if he threw over to first, Diavonzo was going to try to score. So it'll be runners on the corners, one out, Dom Cavanaugh stepping to the plate. Line up and the pitch. And Dom Cavanaugh had an incredible evening to start off this Final Four tournament. He pitched a great game and drove in a couple of runs in that three run fifth inning against Quincy outside. One and one. Overall, he went two for three at the plate, scored a run and drove in two. The righty steps back in. Wind up and the pitch, swing and a miss. One and two. 417 batting average on the season for Kavanaugh, 500 on base percentage, 604 slugging. He has driven in 24 and scored 13 runs. Wind up and the pitch, swing and a miss, and there's out number two. That'll bring up Tyler Dossis, who drove in Kavanaugh last night during that three run inning. Has an opportunity to drive in some runs here with runners on first and third, but there is two outs. And Hornung is going to take off, and he is caught in a pickle. Is the runner from third going to try to score? No. And the second baseman, a smart move there by Max Goodman. Instead of throwing back to first, he hung on to it and just chased Hornung back to the bag. And he kept turning towards third to see if he had a throw. So good awareness there by Medfield. Dosses a 333 batting average on the season. Swing and a miss there. 0 oh and 1. 600 on base percentage for Dosses. 667 slugging. 14 runs driven in, 15 scored. Checking at first, runner back safe.
Perhaps Hornung a little shooken up. He felt kind of hard there getting back to the bag. Donahue set to deal. And Hornung taking off again. We'll see if Diavonzo tries to go. The flip to second. And now Hornung trips up and he's tagged out. And Hornung, I think, is arguing that he was tripped. And hold on, we might not be through here. They're going to give Hornung second base as he was tripped up by the second baseman. So Hornung awarded second base. Well, you can't run directly into the base runner and end up locking legs and trip him up. And that field coach doesn't like the call, as one would expect. So he's going to talk things out with the umpire. And now it looks like a quick discussion with his pitcher, and we are ready to continue. Runners on second and third, two outs for the sevens here in the bottom of the first. Donahue set to deal, leg lift and the pitch. And he gets a piece of this one over to right field. Could be trouble. That'll drop in for a hit. One run is in to score, and here comes another. It's 2 0 Sevens. A two RBI single by Tyler Dossis, who just continues to be huge at the plate. Dante Diavonzo and Jackson Hornung score for the Sevens. And that'll bring up Kevin Balowitz, the left fielder. Balowitz on the season, a 237 batting average, 318 on base percentage. That pitch outside. One and oh. Balowitz has driven in 13 runs and scored 15. Dossis with a slight lead off of first. Wind up and the pitch, down low. Two and oh is the count. Lawrence Tang do up next, shall Balowitz reach. Checking at first, runner back safe. That's a good way to start this game off for the sevens. Get all the momentum in your favor right off the bat. And Jackson Hornung just pumped as he's putting on the catcher's gear. Wind up and the pitch, swing and a miss. Two and one. Donahue set to deal the 2-1. And there's a called strike, two and two. And that hit by Dossis landed right near the line, just staying fair. Perfect position to score both runs. Swing and a miss, and that'll retire the side in the bottom of the first. But the Ashland Sevens played a pair, and they lead it two to nothing as we head to the top of the second on HCAM, WACA TV, and HCAT. Top of the second inning, due up for Medfield, five, six, and seven. Sam Palmer, Jack McDonald, and Jack Goodman. Medfield River Rats find themselves down two to nothing as we head into this top half of the second. Ellen Radcliffe back out on the mound. Sam Palmer to step in. Tyler Dossis with the hit to drive in a pair for the sevens. Lined up and the pitch. And this is hit up the middle. That'll trickle into left field. A leadoff single for Palmer. That'll bring up the first baseman, Jack McDonald. Oh, 
Radcliffe working from the stretch with a runner on first, and he steps off. Takes a look at first and is now set to deal. There's a strike, go and one. Wind up and the pitch, down low. A one and one count. Radcliffe looks at first and is set to deal. And this is up the middle, and it's going to be bobbled by the second baseman, and he'll have no play on it. Well, difficult ball to make a play on. Took an awkward hop towards Dossis, and he just couldn't handle it. So McDonald reaches on the infield single. Palmer up to second. That'll bring up Jack Goodman, the shortstop. I'd say with the bounce, that wasn't really a routine play, so I'll give him the hit on that one. Radcliffe deals. That's fouled into the backstop. Two on, no outs for Medfield. Radcliffe from the stretch. Looks at second and delivers. There's a strike. Oh and two. Radcliffe set to deliver. And this is going to be right back to Radcliffe and it, he deflected it and has no play. It looks like it might have maybe hit the dirt in front of the mound. Took a really awkward hop. So a pair of awkward hits and the bases are loaded for Medfield. And I'll bring up Ryan Murray, the right fielder. Big opportunity here to get right back into the game. And I'm not quite sure what Coach Obit is talking to the ump about. Maybe just questioning what Ratcliffe was saying. And we will play on. From the stretch, fouled away, 0 oh and 1. Well, this game certainly a momentum setter with this tournament format. You really want to try to avoid having to play the 5 o'clock and perhaps the 8 o'clock game tomorrow night. There's a strike. 0 oh and 2. Radcliffe set to deliver. And the ump didn't like it. 1 and 2. Wind up and the pitch. And uh, it gets away from the catcher and the runner from third is going to come and score. Hornung just could not find the ball. And I don't know, to me it looked like the hitter might have went around. And Hornung seems to be shooken up. He, it looked like as he was trying to get to the ball he got a little tripped up. Certainly hope he's okay. Palmer came around to score, but right now all the concern on Jackson Hornung. The ball got away and he went to chase it and then just seemed to trip up on something. Not sure if it was a piece of equipment or just the dirt. And 
he seems to have shooken it off. We'll see if he stays in the game. It appears he will. Well, you know it would certainly take a lot to get Jackson Hornung out of a ball game. Count is two and two. It is a two to one game. McDonald did move up to third, Goodman to second. Down low, full count. Ratcliffe set to deliver. And it's a walk apparently, the ump didn't like it. I disagree with that call. That looked good to me. Like Gilio will step in. I don't see what was wrong with that pitch. And Coach Obid wants to talk things over. Coach Obid and Horning out there, and the good news is Horning appeared to be walking okay after getting shooken up, tracking down a wild pitch. And some words of wisdom from the second year head coach. Bases loaded, no outs for Medfield. A run already in, it's a 2-1 Ashland lead. But Medfield continuing to threaten. Ratcliffe deals. There's a strike. Line up and the pitch. And the umpire says hi. Well, one thing we have determined is this umpire has a very low strike zone. One and one. And this is hit in the air over to center field. It is caught. Runner from third going to try to tag. The throw in is cut off. And a throw to the plate not in time. And it'll be a two to two game. So sacrifice RBI fly out by Giglio. Allows McDonald to score. Goodman up to third and Murray up to second. One out in the inning. A pair in scoring position. Nick Sheehan to the plate. Well, it's a brand new ball game here in the top of the second. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Well, knowing that there's that low strike zone, the key to success today is going to be keep your pitches low. Here's the 0-1. There's strike two. McSheehan struck out in the first inning. And he'll get a piece of this one, left side. And the throw to first, he'll get the out. Good awareness by Dushney as he looked at the runner at third before throwing over to first. A five to three out, two away, Max Goodman to the plate. Set to deliver. And this is hit high in the air, right side over to right field, and caught for the out, but Medfield ties things up at two apiece as we head to the bottom of the second on HCAM, WACA-TV, and HCAT. Bottom of the second inning, seven, eight, and nine do up for the sevens. Lawrence Tang, Mason Dushney, and Nick Calabrese 
We are knotted up at two apiece. The sevens played it a pair in the bottom of the first, but Bedfield retaliated in the top half of the second. And now we'll see if Lawrence Tang can get things started on the right path. A 273 batting average on the season. 368 on base percentage. He has scored five runs and driven in seven. Swing and a miss there. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. 0 oh and 2. Donahue set to deal. Swing and a miss. A three pitch strikeout. That'll bring up Mason Dushney, the third baseman. Dushney on the season, a 302 batting average, 367 on base percentage. He has driven in 10 runs and scored nine. Donahue set to deal. Swing and a miss. Well, perhaps Ryan Donahue starting to find his stride out there for Medfield. Set to deal. Swing and a miss. Late swing there, 0 and 2. Calabrese do up next. Leg lift and the pitch. Outside. One and two. Donahue set to deal. Swing and a miss, two straight strikeouts. That'll bring up Nick Calabrese. Nick Calabrese on the season, a 551 batting average, 590 on base percentage. He's been tremendous in that ninth spot. He's driven in 14 and scored 16. Line up and the pitch, swing and a tip, 0 oh and 1. And there's strike two. Donahue deals, there's strike three and Ryan Donahue strikes out the side, and we will head to the top of the third on HCAM, WACA TV, and HCAP. Top of the third inning, a two to two game. Three, four, and five due up for Medfield. Dennis Follin to start things off, all by Ben Leonard and Sam Palmer. Owen Radcliffe out there for his third inning of work. And the Medfield bench making some noise as this is driven in the air over to right field and it is caught. Good range there by Nick Calabrese. And Calabrese really had to backtrack to get to that one, but he's able to hunt it down for out number one. And that'll bring up Ben Leonard, the left fielder. Leonard grounded out in the first inning in his only plate appearance. Lined up and the pitch. A little high, one and oh. Set to deal, leg lift and the pitch. And this is hit high in the air, right side. It is in foul territory and it is caught. Nick Calabrese does it again. And Calabrese almost lost that one. It gets a little dark in that foul territory. And it looked like he just caught up to it in the nick of time. Sam Palmer will step in, the center fielder. Why 
Right up and the pitch. Down low. One and oh. He winds, he deals. There's strike one. One and one. Leg lift and the pitch. There's strike two, one and two. One, two pitch. Got him. Swing and a miss, and out number three. A nice sitting by Owen Radcliffe, and that's exactly what the Sevens needed to get a little momentum in their favor. To the bottom of the third we go. We are now to that two. You are tuned in Ashland Sevens Summer Playoff Baseball. Top, bottom of the third inning, Dante Diavonzo stepping in. Top of the order for the Sevens, Diavonzo, Farrell, and Hornung do up. Ryan Donahue set to deal. And he'll deal that one down low. Donahue struck out the side in the bottom of the second. But a good response by Owen Radcliffe with the help of Nick Calabrese. Two quick flyouts and a Radcliffe strikeout. A one and oh count on Diavonzo. Diavonzo singled and scored one of the two runs in the first inning. And he takes a strike there. One and one. Well, Donahue for sure is a fastball type of pitcher. Pretty good velocity. And that's high, two and one. Well, he lost his grip on that one. Here's the two one. Little low, three and one. He deals, there's a strike. Ivanzo knew it too, I think he was mad at himself for not swinging for that one. Full count. Lined up and the pitch. Swing and a miss, out number one. Fourth straight strikeout for Donahue, his sixth of the game. And I'll bring up Sam Farrell. Go, Sam. Lined up and the pitch. And there's ball one, a little outside there, one and oh. Farrell walked in his only plate appearance back in the first inning. Swing and a miss, one and one. Leg lift and the pitch, down low, two and one. The 2-1 pitch. There's strike two, says the umpire. Two and two. Donahue winds and deals, and that hit him. And the umpire's saying foul ball. And Farrell, I think, is going to show him where he got hit. And now he will be rewarded first base. 
Well, it did make kind of a sound like it went off the bat, but it didn't look like it went off the bat from here. So a good call there by the umpire, setting him to first base. Jackson Hornung will step in. One on, one out. Hornung grounded into a force out in the first inning. And he reached because of the force out, but ended up scoring the second run of the day for the Sevens on that Tyler Dossis two RBI hit. Checking at first, runner back safe. That was close. Well, Donahue's gonna keep these runners in check, so I know the Sevens like to steal, but I wouldn't risk too big of a lead here. This looks like the type of game that every base runner is gonna count. And Horna gets a piece of this one over to center field, and it is caught. And now the throw to first, and Farrell has to get back, and he will. Well, Hornung tattooed that ball, but it's very deep out there into center, and Sam Palmer was playing deep out and was able to make the catch. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh. And Hornung was trying to put that out of the ballpark. A 363 sign, that's in left center, but if you go directly to center where Hornung hit that ball, it looks at least 380 out there. Check it at first. And the umpire says safe. Medfield thought they had him. So Kavanaugh struck out in his only plate appearance in the first inning. Line up and the pitch. Runner taking off to throw to second. Not in time, a stolen base for Farrell. Now Sam Farrell, probably the fastest guy in the sevens lineup. And manufacturing runs seems like it's gonna be pretty important in this game. It's Farrell's sixth steal of the year. Fouled away. Go oh, and two is the count. Oh, Dom Cavanaugh drops a hit into the outfield. Farrell's scoring for sure. Line up and the pitch. And there's the ball slightly high, one and two. Donahue set the deal, leg lift and the pitch. And this is up the left side, loved by the third baseman. He'll throw to first and it's in time. Five to three, four out number three. We continue on to the top of the fourth. We are not at two apiece here at Adams Field in Quincy. Top of the fourth inning, six, seven, and eight coming up for Medfield. Jack McDonald, Jack Goodman, Ryan Murray do up to face Owen Radcliffe. He had a nice top half of the third inning. And I would say, based on what I've seen, this is the tough part of the Medfield lineup right here, these six, seven, and eight hitters. I mean, the whole lineup's pretty good, but these guys, Especially as this is hit in the air, right side, and it is caught. Speedy Calabrese makes another great catch. He is just catching everything hit his way tonight. And that'll bring up Jack Goodman, the shortstop. He really had a range to his left to make that catch. Pretty much if you Hit it anywhere near Calabrese, he's likely to catch it. And the speed that the Sevens have in the outfield has just been so valuable this season. They do not give up a whole lot of hits out there, especially if they're fly balls. So Jack Goodman set to step in with one out.
So I'm happy, happy to be with you for Ashland Sevens Final Four Baseball of the Massachusetts Independent Baseball League against Medfield tonight. A lot of these players familiar with each other from their TVL days. As there's a ball, says the home plate umpire, one and oh. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to center field and caught by Sam Farrell, two away. Now will bring up Ryan Murray, the right fielder. Now well, this ball game is going just about as expected between these two very good teams. And especially at this point in the postseason, as this is chipped up the right side, foul. Oh, and one. Murray was just crossing his fingers that would go foul. Lefty steps back in. Line up and the pitch. There's a nice breaking pitch for strike two. Coach Obid moving his defense around. Here's the 0-2, down low. One and two. Well, Radcliffe has certainly picked up on the fact that the sump has a relatively low strike zone and that's where he's trying to keep his pitches. The one, two. No, the ump didn't like it. That looked like a very nice pitch. Line up and the pitch. Ball three. Well, I know it's a bit different for these umps to be behind the mound. Line up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air, left side, and that'll drop in for a hit. A two out single by Ryan Murray, and that'll bring up Mike Giglio. Mike Giglio, the catcher, he had a sacrifice RBI in the second inning, which ended up scoring the second run for Medfield to tie things up. And this is up the right side, foul. Nearly a nice play by the coach there. Here's the 0-1. There's strike two. Line up and the pitch. A little low there, one and two. Well, typically those have been called strikes tonight. Runner on first, two outs, one, two count. There it is, strike three, four out number three. We will move along to the bottom of the fourth. We are now to that two between Ashland and Medfield on HCAM, WACA TV, and HCAT. Bottom of the fourth inning, Tyler Doss is stepping in, followed by Kevin Balowitz and Lawrence Tang. Donahue set to deliver. This is fouled away into the parking lot behind us. 0 oh and 1. Doss has had the two RBI hit. to put Ashland ahead at the time, two to nothing. Midfield, of course, has since tied things up. 
Wind up in the pitch, and this is up the middle, glove by the second baseman, throw to first, they get the out. Four to three, four out number one. It'll bring up Kevin Balowitz, the left fielder. Balowitz 0 for 1 so far today at the plate. Line up and the pitch, swing and a miss. Oh and one. Donahue set to deal. There's a ball. Excuse me, that is gonna be a strike, oh and two. The 0-2, there's strike three. Two away, that'll bring up Lawrence Tang. Line up and the pitch, swing and a miss. Oh, and one. Set to deliver. And there's strike two. Couldn't hold his swing there. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss, there's strike three. One, two, three, they go to the top of the fifth. We go. You are tuned in to Ashland 7 Summer Playoff Baseball on HKM WACA TV and HCAT. Top of the fifth inning. We are knotted up at two apiece. So one, two, three inning in the bottom of the fourth as stepping in for Medfield will be Nick Sheehan, the leadoff man. He's 0 for 2 so far today. And this game has certainly turned into a pitcher's duel between Owen Radcliffe and Ryan Donahue. Wind up and the pitch. There's a ball. Set the deal. There's a strike. 0 and 2. Excuse me, 1 and 1. We're just uh, getting the live stream back up. Thanks for. Everyone who's watching on the live stream, wind up and the pitch, swing and a miss. One and two. Set to deal. Swing and a miss. There is out number one. And that'll bring up Max Goodman, the second baseman. Goodman 0 for 1 today with a walk. There's a strike. Oh and 1 is the count. There's strike 2. Radcliffe may be starting to feel it now. Line up and the pitch. Little inside, one and two. Set to deliver. The ump didn't like it. The low strike zone factor. Two and two. Line up and the pitch, and this is up the middle, and that'll trickle into center field. One out single, that'll bring up Dennis Follin. A 
One on and one out for Medfield. Fallen is 0 for 2 so far today. And this is going to be hit up the right side. Glove by Kavanaugh, throw to second for one. The throw back to first. They double him up. A 3-6-3 three, three, double play to retire the side in the top half of the fifth to the bottom of the inning we go. We are knotted up at two apiece between Ashland and Medfield. You are tuned in to Ashland 7 Summer Playoff Baseball. Bottom of the fifth inning, we are tied at two apiece. Two up for the sevens is Mason Dushney, Nick Calabrese, and Dante Diavanzo. Dushney 0 for 1 on the day. And this has turned into a good pitcher's duel and a good defensive ball game. And we'll see what team can strike first. As this is hit in the air, over to left center, and it is going to be caught. Sam Palmer ranging over to make the catch. That'll bring up Nick Calabrese. That was some good contact there by Dushney. But it hung on a little too long. Calabrese 0 for 1 so far today. Lineup and the pitch. Calabrese fouls this one away. 0 oh and 1. Donahue set to deliver. And he'll get a good piece of this one in the left field it goes. And Calabrese is aboard with a one out single. I'll bring up Dante Diavanzo, the shortstop. Diavanzo one for two today. He scored one of the two runs all the way back in the first inning. Checking at first, Calabrese slides back safe. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Oh and one. Donahue checks in, and the runner is back safe. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. 0 oh and 2. Well, this game, just about everything you'd expect in a playoff game, especially at the final four level. It's been a great ball game so far tonight. There's strike three, got him looking two away. That'll bring up Sam Farrell, the center fielder. Farrell having a pretty good day at the plate. Perfect on base percentage at least. He has walked and been hit by a pitch. Checking at first, and the runner's back safe. It's been good pickoff attempts tonight by both teams, at least so far. There's been quite a few of them on both sides. Line up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air, foul just behind us. Look out, cars. And 
And that was amazing that it did not hit a car. Landed right between a pair of them. One on, two outs. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. One and one. Donahue set to deal. Outside, two and one. Line up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Hard swing there by Farrell. Two and two. Bottom of the fifth inning, Ashland two, Medfield two. Here at Adams Field in Quincy, Tom Nappy on the call, Connor Donovan on camera. Ashland seven, summer baseball. Swing and a miss, and that'll wrap up the fifth inning. To the top of the six we go. We remain tied at two in this final four playoff game on HCAM, WACA-TV, and HCAT. Top of the sixth inning, four, five, and six, two up for Medfield. Ben Leonard, Sam Palmer, and Jack McDonald to face Owen Radcliffe. A two to two game, it has turned into a full out pitcher's duel. Line up and the pitch, down low. One and oh count. Radcliffe deals, there's a strike, one and one. Leg lift and the pitch, strike two, one and two. Well, a low strike zone factor working on both sides. That looked good, but not to the ump, two and two. Line up and the pitch. Full count. And this is a little trickler up the right side. Glove by Kavanaugh, he steps on the back for the out. And a three unassisted ground out, one away. That'll bring up Sam Palmer, the center fielder. Palmer so far on the day, one for two. Singled in the second inning and scored a run, and he has struck out. There's a strike. The 0 1. And that's fouled away, 0 and 2. Well, a pair of good games here in the final four this evening at Adams Field in Quincy. In the first game, which started at 5, and the elimination game, Quincy beat Braintree 11 to 7. That game went nine innings, so Quincy hangs on to tournament hopes, or title hopes, I should say. And that is fouled away. Look out in the street. Count remains 0 and 2. Here's the 0 2. Swing and a miss. Out number two. Bring up Jack McDonald, the first baseman. Donald one for two today. He scored the other run in the second inning after a single, and he has flown out. Lined up and the pitch. There's a strike, 0 oh and 1.
Radcliffe set to deal. Fouled away, 0-2. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit up the middle. That'll get into center field, a two-out single. We'll bring up Jack Goodman, the shortstop. It's the fourth hit of the game for Medfield. And the man at the plate now has one of those hits, Jack Goodman. He's one for two on the day. He has singled and flown out. Up high, one and oh. Well, if I'm Radcliffe right now, I'm not even worried about the runner on first. Just concentrate on getting that third out. Takes a quick look at first and deals. The ump didn't like it. Two and zero count from the stretch. There's a stride. Two and one. Here's the two one. That is fouled away just behind us. And into the parking lot it goes, and over a car. It is amazing that I haven't seen a car get it tonight yet. The parking lot in close quarters with right behind home plate. And actually it's the street, but a lot of people parked on that street as this is fouled up the right side. Count remains two and two. Radcliffe set to deal. Looks at first and delivers up high. Runner takes off and it gets away from Hornung. So a stolen base for McDonald. Well, he picked a good time to take off there. Full count now. And this is up the left side, past the glove of Dushney. And McDonald going to third, ran into Dushney. And he's going to allow him to score. So some interference called on Dushney, and Jack McDonald will score. It's a 3-2 to two Medfield lead. An RBI single for Jack Goodman. And Murray will come to the plate. Well, I mean, Dushney, the ball was by him at that point. He needs to get out of the way in that situation. I hate to say it, but he had a little time to get out of the way there. So a 3-2 to two medfield lead now in the top of the sixth. Radcliffe set to deliver, up high. The 1-0, up high, says the umpire, 2-0.
Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. The low strike zone factor, two and one. It's one of the lowest strike zones I've seen all season from an umpire. Line up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to center field and in and out of the glove of Farrell. He nearly had it, lead runner heading over to third. And he, that's where he will stay. It is a two out single for Murray. And now we're gonna have a pinch hitter for Medfield. Stepping in for the catcher, Mike Giglio. And it's gonna be Jack MacDonald stepping in. So McDonald steps in for the catcher and he'll take a ball. Line up and the pitch up high. And it looks like the sevens are going to start loosening up some arms in case Radcliffe continues to struggle. They're going to get Dylan Fonseca and Matty Tomaselli over there getting loose. Andrew Dennison also marching over. And there's a strike. Two and one. A three to two lead for Medfield as they have played it a run in this top of the six, but there's still time for the sevens to get back into this ball game. Swing and a miss. That was an angry pitch there from Radcliffe. The 2-2 two -two pitch. And he got him. And that will retire the side in the top of the six, but Medfield takes the lead. It's a three to two game as we head to the bottom of the sixth on HCAT, WACA TV, and HCAT. Bottom of the sixth inning, Jackson Horning to start things off. Three, four, and five do up. Horning, Kavanaugh, and Dossis wind up and the pitch. A little high, one and oh. Well, it's been a great performance from Ryan Donahue so far, and he's out there to try to keep it going. As this is hit up the middle, glove by the shortstop, throw to first in time. One and oh. Or excuse me, uh, one out in the inning. Um, Kavanaugh steps in. Kavanaugh 0 for 2 so far today. Wind up and the pitch. A little high there. 2 and 0. Oh. Set to deliver, and he'll get a piece of this one over to right field. That'll get down for a hit. A runner aboard with one out for the sevens. I'll bring up Tyler Dossis to the plate. Dossis, one for two today, had the two RBI single in the first inning. And scored the only two runs of the game for the sevens. Can he come through again here? Line 
Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. There's a ball, one and one. Set to deliver, and this is up the middle, and it's off the pitcher's glove, and he lost it, and the throw to first, not in time, everyone's safe. Well, 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 a little momentum for the sevens. Kevin Balowitz do up. Two on and one out for the sevens. And that was certainly some luck there by Doss. This looked like it was gonna be a routine grounder back to the pitcher, but it took an awkward hop and he just straight out lost it. Line up and the pitch, up high. One and oh count. Time called by the hitter. And he steps back in, we're ready to go. Just outside. Up and the pitch, little high, three and oh, you got two on base, one out. Set to deliver, and there's the walk, bases loaded for the sevens. I'll bring up. Large Tang was due up, but we're gonna have a pinch hitter here. It's gonna be Connor Kramer stepping in to pinch hit for Tang. And we're gonna get a discussion on the mound here by Medfield. Looks like for now Donahue will stay in the game. Connor Kramer, the 16-year-old out of Ashland, due up. Bases loaded for the sevens, one out in the inning. Donahue set to deliver. Outside, one and oh. Donahue having a little trouble finding the strike zone since that hit by Dossis. There's a strike, one and one. Set to deliver. And there's a strike two, one and two. Seven still need a play to run to at least tie the game. And Kramer gets a piece of this, but it's foul. One and two. Set to deliver, and this is up the right side, glove by the first baseman to throw home, and they will get the force out at home. So,
Kramer reaches on the four to two force out. And it remains a three to two Medfield lead as Mason Dushney will step in. Well, they need Dushney to come through here more than ever. Of course, you still have another inning in the seventh, but you got bases loaded. You'd love to take advantage of it. Donahue set to deal. There's a strike. Yo one. Down low gets by the catcher. Runner from third is going to try to score. The throw is not in time. And we have a tie game. And now another runner coming home. And the seventh take the lead. The throw gets away from Donahue. And two runs score. And the sevens reclaim the lead. Kevin Ballow, it's flying all the way from second base to put the sevens on top. And just like that, it's a four to three Ashland lead. Unbelievable. The catcher tried to get the ball back to the pitcher and it squirted it out. And another run was able to come around up high. So now, Medfield will be down there Final three outs, next inning. Line up and the pitch, and this is hit in the air, right side, foul territory, and caught. But the Ashland Sevens plate a pair of runs, and they lead it four to three as we head to the top of the seventh on HCAM, WACA-TV and HCAT. Top of the seventh inning, Medfield down to their final three outs. After the sevens played a pair in the bottom of the six, a wild pitch got by the catcher, allowed a run to score, and then a bad throw from the catcher to the pitcher got away, allowing another run to score. A bunt there for a strike. It was Tyler Ardasis and Kevin Balowitz who ended up coming around. One and one count. Down low. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. Set to deliver. And that is going to be a ball, three and two. And there's strike three, got him. Medfield down to their final two outs. Max Goodman will step in. Goodman one for two with a walk. Wide up and the pitch. There's a strike. Oh and one. Leg lift and the pitch. There's strike two. Owen Radcliffe, an opportunity now to Go the complete game and pick up the win if he can get these next two outs. And this is hit in the air over to left field and it's caught by a diving Kevin Balowitz. Two away. 
Dennis Fullen will step to the plate. What a catch that was by Balowitz in left field. Medfield down to their final out. Line up and the pitch. Up high, one and oh. Ratcliffe deals. There's a strike, one and one. Set to deliver. Swing and a miss. One and two. Medfield down to their final strike. He winds, he deals, hit in the air, and it's a pop fly and caught by the second baseman. And the Ashland Sevens defeat Medfield by a final score of four to three. What a win by the Ashland Sevens. And they will play at 8 p.m. tomorrow night against the winner of Medfield and Braintree, who will meet up, or excuse me, Medfield and Quincy, who will meet up at 5 o'clock. But the Ashland Sevens doing just enough to grab the win here tonight, improve the 2 and 0 in Final Four play, and advance to the Massachusetts Independent Baseball League Championship. A uh, very well pitched game by Owen Ratcliffe. He went the distance, giving up just three runs to a very talented midfield team. And some other big contributors, of course, was Tyler Dossis, who had the two RBI single in the first inning, and he scored one of the two runs in the sixth inning to put the sevens ahead. The first run was Tyler Dossis. He scored on a wild pitch. And then a misfire thrown into the plate. Kevin Balowitz came around and he was able to score the go ahead run. And the Ashland Sevens move on to the championship round of the Massachusetts Independent Baseball League Final Four as they take down Medfield tonight by a final score of four to three. For Connor Donovan on camera, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching Ash Ashland Seven Summer Playoff Baseball, and we look forward to covering the championship round in which we know now for a fact that the Ashland Sevens will be participating in. The final score for the final time, Ashland four, Medfield three. The Sevens have a chance to be champions, and we will soon find out if they are able to win the ultimate prize. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you again soon.